Toyota has some of the most well-respected pickup trucks in the entire world, as well as some of the most respected hybrid and plug-in hybrid technology. Now, according to Jack Hollis, Executive Vice President here in North America, Toyota is looking to blend the best of Toyota's hybrid and plug-in hybrid technology with its pickup truck lineup. We also have new rumors coming out discussing the new tiny pickup truck, the Stout, or whatever you want to call it. Grab your snacks and drinks, buckle in, and let's go. We're over at NBC Chicago of all places. Toyota could introduce electric, plug-in Tacoma, and Tundra pickup trucks if you're excited about more powertrains coming for the Tacoma and the Tundra smash that like button. Don't think that you're gonna get a V6 reprising the role in the Tacoma or, or even a V8 reprising its role in the Tundra, but we could get some really extremely efficient and even more powerful powertrains than we've ever seen before. Toyota Motor is evaluating an expansion of its US truck lineup, which could include all electric or plug-in hybrid electric versions of its Tacoma and Tundra. I would say and, not or. I think it's really gonna depend on the market as well as the, the ever-changing laws around electrification here in the United States. But I think plug-in hybrid is the answer personally. And I'll, I'll show you guys some hypotheticals with these plug-in hybrids at the end. I made a video last week that the electric pickup truck market is in a really bad spot right now. Ford keeps diminishing its workers and also shifts to produce the F-150 Lightning. Also, Rivian is having to drop prices on their R1T. Their Cybertruck is hardly selling any right now. They're having, I think they're still having quite a bit of issues getting that up to mass production, but I could be wrong on that. Getting back to Jack Hollis, EVP of TMNA, said so the Japanese automaker is assessing its option to determine what makes the most sense based on expected customer demand and tightening federal emissions and fuel economy regulations? Yeah, they're sandwiched between what the customer wants and what the government wants. And they have to, of course, abide by both. But recently, Toyota's uh, full, full on president, not vice president, but their normal president, Ted Ogawa here in North America, he said, hey, we're going to focus on the customer, not what the government wants. Ultimately, the customer decides and we're going to create our products based around that. And if they have to pay credits to the government or to other companies so they don't get fined by the government, they will do it. But their number one goal is to serve the customers. So let's get back into Jack Hollis here. I do think there's room to grow our entire truck footprint. Guys, drum roll here. Whether it be Tundra, Tacoma, or something else in addition to the lineup. This is not the first time Jack Hollis has brought up the new entry level pickup truck for Toyota. A lot of people are calling it the Stout. We can just call it the Stout for the rest of this video. But this would be a direct fighter against um, the Ford Maverick and the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz has got a nice refresh with some updated infotainment and slightly different styling, but they didn't bring the hybrid powertrain that let's say the Tucson uses or the Santa Fe uses. Instead, they just doubled down on their turbo powertrain and their naturally aspirated uh, powertrain. The Ford Maverick though, gives you turbo power or hybrid power. And the hybrid is extremely high demand, 40 miles per gallon roughly, uh, front wheel drive only. And that's where Toyota could really come in, smack not only the Maverick around, but also the Santa Cruz and say, hey, here's, E all wheel drive, small pickup truck, very affordable, starting around $25,000 and you can have your cake and eat it too. All wheel drive and hybrid power and efficiency. We know Toyota's hybrids are some of the best in the world. They're very, very efficient. And you can say Ford's Maverick uses a very similar technology to Toyota's with the ECVT technology um, and the planetary gear uh, power split device, which is a very simple and reliable setup. Jack Hollis says whether that's a compact or something else, right? He can't be too specific. That's why he also gives himself an out here or something else, but he was awfully specific here by saying it's a compact to fight something like the Maverick and the Santa Cruz. I think it's important for us to see what the customers are looking for. And the customers have been asking for a small pickup truck for 
a long time. Ever since the Tacoma has gotten pretty darn huge compared to where it was a decade and a half ago, Toyota buyers want a small pickup truck, a thrifty, affordable, easy to park, easy to put in a garage if you need to, easy to get around town as well. Toyota just doesn't have that. The Tacoma's just gotten so much, so much bigger over the years, and we miss the tiny Toyota pickup trucks of the past. So they're saying in the past, Toyota's talked about BEVs for pickup trucks. Now they're focusing on plug-in hybrids in the current market. So I still think BEV pickup trucks could come for Toyota. It might not come, honestly, until they have solid state batteries. So we could be like a decade out until they have high volume production of solid state batteries. In the meantime, they have really good plug-in hybrid technology and why not use it? No one else. Okay, you have the Ram charger, that is one. The RAV4 Prime's powertrain could be seen as something like the Stout, a Maverick fighter, but it can't go into the truck-based platform that's rear-wheel drive bias in the Tacoma and the Tundra. So Toyota earlier this year said it would invest $1.3 billion in its Kentucky plant to produce all new three-row electric SUV for the US market. They also are making the Hilux battery electric in Thailand since there's a chicken tax we would never get that. Chicken tax is a 25% import tax on pickup trucks or industrial or commercial vehicles here in the United States. He confirmed, however, the company is looking into both BEV and PHEV versions of the Tacoma and full-size Tundra. Here we go. I'm going to take a, a break real quick and we'll, we'll come back to this article because I have to talk about this. I can't put it off any longer. If we're talking about a plug-in hybrid Tacoma, Okay, the hybrid hasn't even come out yet, and I'm driving it uh, in April in just a few weeks from now. Um, but the plug-in hybrid has not, we've never seen a plug-in hybrid on a Toyota pickup truck before. We already have hybrids of the Tundra as well as a Sequoia and potentially the LX700 coming next year in 2025. But check this out. This is what would go into the Tacoma, uh, the 4Runner, the Prado, slash the Land Cruiser, what we have here in the United States, as well as the Lexus GX. And this would take the eight-speed auto they currently have, as well as a 2.4 turbo, and they would put a much more powerful electric motor sandwiched between the four-cylinder turbo and the eight-speed auto. So triple that motor's power, give it a lot more torque, and we're talking over 428 horsepower and also about 543 pound-feet of torque. I have no idea what the towing capacity would be because when you add that much battery, it increases the weight of the vehicle, which reduces the towing in theory as well. So miles per gallon could go up due to having a more potent and usable battery, but also you're gonna have probably well over 30 miles of electric range assuming the battery pack is around 25 kilowatt hours, and it's gotta be big. If the RAV4 Prime has an 18 kilowatt hour battery, I could see Toyota have no problems putting something as big as a 25 or larger kilowatt hour battery in this truck-based plug-in hybrid. So you would have electric range, 35 miles to get around town, and you could have plenty of electric grunt to do that, assuming you're not towing or hauling anything. And then if you need to tow or haul, that gasoline engine's turning on and you get 428 horsepower combined and 543 pound-feet of torque. That is with the smaller iForce Max. Maybe they call it iForce Max Plus. I have no idea what they would call it. The Lexus lineup, when they use Plus, that denotes plug-in hybrid. So maybe they use the Plus here for these trucks on the Toyota end. Now, there's also the Twin Turbo V6 Hybrid. They would also make a plug-in variant of that, use the same electric motor that they have on the Tacoma's plug-in hybrid, the Max Plus, whatever you want to call it. And that would get a 539 horsepower, 685 pound-feet of torque, over 24 miles per gallon, at least 30 miles of electric range, and it would be a beast of a powertrain. What are the downsides of giving the Tacoma and the Tundra plug-in hybrid? Well, I already mentioned the weight, but of course, with a bigger battery, a more potent electric motor as well, you're going to be charged quite a bit more, I would say, for this sort of setup. I just looked up information on the Ram charger. They don't really know what the price is going to be. High 50,000s and it'll run well into the 90,000s. I would expect at least that. You no, know, down a car and driver here, they say start around 60,000, go up to 78,000. 
I mean, guys, the Tundra Capstone is already about $80,000 pickup truck. I would say they're going to charge ten grand more to get into this plug-in iForce Max Plus. I don't... Uh, I, iForce Ultimate, maybe that's what it would be, iForce Ultimate. And I'm not... I did not come up with uh, fully battery electric powertrains because there's just so much unknown there for me. They could do dual motor. One motor for the front axle, one motor for the rear axle. They could do quad motor. They could do triple motor. So torque vectoring in the rear motor. There's too many options for me to go down the rabbit hole and just no current vehicle to base my hypotheticals off of. This is super easy. You just put a bigger, bigger battery in their high force max powertrains and you give it a more powerful electric motor and you have a very simple and effective plug-in hybrid pickup truck from the Tacoma to the Tundra to the Land Cruiser and maybe even Forerunner all the way to the Sequoia and the LX as well. I want to know what you guys would rather have down below. Would you rather have a plug-in hybrid Toyota pickup truck or SUV regardless of size or would you rather have a battery electric Toyota pickup or SUV regardless of size? I think Toyota's demographics right now would lean towards PHEV until they can prove that they have a kick-ass battery technology or efficiency or just competency that we haven't seen from them yet, the conservative Toyota consumer is more likely to go to what they know Toyota can do really well, and that's hybrids and plug-in hybrids. I also wanted to bring up this. Toyota's Jack Hall series again talks about the Amazon selling experience. We know Hyundai's trying it out right now, and actually I think it's either Hyundai employees or Amazon employees are the only ones like in this pilot program buying the new Santa Fe, for example, off of the Amazon marketplace. And they're supposedly being able to do a lot of the paperwork online. But my understanding that it, it is still all done through the dealer. So it's just kind of like an easier experience to buy, but it, the dealer is still involved. It's not like Amazon shipping you a car like how Tesla ships you a car. Toyota prefers its SmartPath digital retailing tool and its monogram counterpart at Lexus, according to Jack Hollis. Hollis said it is a completely divergent approach and the crowd was clapping. Remember, this is at Auto Forum New York, I think is what it's called. And pretty much dealers paid to attend this where different executives throughout the industry go up and they talk about hot button issues, all right? And so the crowd filled with dealers was applauding Jack Hollis because Hollis said it is dangerous to go outside the dealership system. The customer right now sees the benefit of not having dealers. After getting screwed over by dealers for years now, ever since the pandemic, the dealers are the sour and of Toyota right now. They're ruining the brand image for Toyota, but it's not just Toyota, it's the other automakers too. But Toyota especially, a pretty sour reputation since the pandemic with their dealers. And here's Jack Hollis saying, hey, we wanna make products for the customers primarily, not for what the government is expecting us. On the other end, he's saying, ah, we want customers to just go through the dealers but that's not what customers really want. Let me know down below if you would rather buy your next Toyota from a seamless upfront pricing, one click button, sign a few documents online and the car is delivered to your door like a Tesla, for example, or would you rather go through the old school dealer system? Let me know what you prefer down below. As a millennial and actually having work into the sales side, I would prefer to do it as simple as possible. This is a car I want to deliver it to my house. I'll sign the paperwork. There's my $50,000 pickup truck delivered in the next week or two, instead of having to deal with the games, the hoops and the MSRP markups. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to deal with that. Toyota wants nothing to do with selling cars outside of the dealers. And it is pretty much illegal because of the dealer laws that have been enacted over the last century to protect themselves. Remember, it was almost impossible in many states for Tesla to sell direct to consumer. And I think it still might be in some states. So you have to kind of like buy your Tesla out of state. It's crazy. But anyways, Jack Hollis says for us to take the dealer input and provide it so that they have a tool to make it seamless for you, the customer, 
That to me, we're all in on. It's in alignment directly with all the DMS systems and all of the cybersecurity needs and all the protection of privacy for the customer and the dealer. Toyota will continue to focus on improving the digital experience with both systems. We're only great now, he said, we need to be greater. We started with something with our dealers and we need to take what we've done already and make it better. That's where we're committed. Toyota is 100% committed to their dealers. They want to modernize the sales experience through their online platforms, such as Monogram and uh, SmartPath. But buying a Toyota is not going to be that seamless experience that most people want. It's unfortunate, and they're, at least they're trying to modernize it, but I don't know if it's ever going to be as seamless as buying something online. And that's really unfortunate because that's where the market's mind is. And that's where the millennial, the next generation mind, even after mine, the, what, what are you guys, the Gen Z's out there? Everything needs to be done simple, hassle-free without stress and also not wasting people's time or disrespecting the customer. And that's what we know dealers like to do is wasting people's time playing games. Not all dealers, not all dealers, but Toyota's reputation right now is that. It is sour with their dealership experience and they are doubling down on it, but at least they're trying to make it better. How much better will it get? I don't want to get my hopes up, but I'll see you guys down below. Let me know if you've had any good or bad Toyota dealership experiences in the recent, in recent history, I should say, when buying either a new or used vehicle. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe for more Toyota updates. Have a great day and peace out.